Today I'm looking at an old Radio Shack Realistic PRO 2021 programmable scanner. This particular scanner has been in storage for a while, but it seems to work okay. I've reset all of the memories and uh, I'm going to reprogram some new frequencies into this and uh, put it back into service. Before I do that, I'll just kind of quickly go through the radio's features and functions before I start to program anything into it. Um, as you can see, uh, the, the layout is fairly basic. There's a volume and a squelch knob. Um, all the programming keys are here and obviously the display is here. Now, it may not be real visible in the camera just because of the lighting down here, but the, um, the screen is backlit blue, although the backlight is a little bit weak now. You can see that on the side of the unit there are some thumb screws. This could be mounted manually or to an undershelf bracket or something like that. On the back of the unit you can see the antenna connector here. This is not removable um, anymore. I'm not sure if the previous owner soldered that in or what, but I can't seem to get this out. This is an adapter. The actual um, antenna connection for this is like an old F-type uh, connector, and this is, like I said, some sort of adapter or something that the previous owner has modded in there, and it's now permanent. Um, but they do sell adapters that you can buy and, and uh, you know, remove and install. Uh, this also has a tape monitor out in case you wanted to record um, the activity that you received on the scanner. It's got an external speaker jack and it's got a, a jack for external power, 13.8 volts, so if you wanted to run this mobile or off of a um, separate power supply you could do that. There's a button here that you can push to reset the unit. In fact, I can just do that again since I've already done it. You can hear it beeps and that'll reset it everything back to uh, factory defaults which is pretty much zero. And then under this cover is a 9 volt battery that is used to keep the, the uh, memories when the radio is unplugged and there's no power to it. And this will need to be changed every few years. Um, in fact, it probably should be checked just to make sure that it's not leaking. So while I'm thinking of it, I will just pull this cover off. I recently purchased this unit at a ham fest, so I have no idea what condition any of it's in. This battery seems okay. doesn't seem like it's leaking or anything. It might even be fairly new. Well, you can see there that it might have been leaking at one point. This little fretta pad on the back of here is pretty gooey. But I'll put it back in. should be fine. Because this radio has a, a slight angle to it, um, the camera angle here is a little bit less than optimal, so I'm going to prop it up on this tape measure in the back just so that it, it's a little easier to read. With the scanner up at this angle now, you can clearly see the speaker on the top of the unit, which does provide plenty of audio output power. I'd say that's a 2.5 or 3 inch speaker in there. And uh, that seems to work okay. Um, no problems there. And of course, there's also a built-in uh, telescoping whip antenna, which is fine for uh, you know receiving local signals or strong signals. But uh, if you're out in the fringes of of your area, kind of like I am, then an ex external antenna is going to work better. Uh, right now, I've just got the telescoping whip on there, as I don't have an external antenna that'll reach over to uh, where I'm filming this. Now I'll get a little deeper into programming and operation of the scanner. Uh, right now I've just got this stopped on channel 1 and you can see that those are all zeros. I don't have anything programmed in there. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is uh, program in some frequencies to listen to. Um, and just because I know them off the top of my head and I don't need to look them up, I'm going to program in a couple of uh, local ham radio repeaters. Uh, into the first couple of channels just for demonstration purposes. To enter programming mode, I'm going to push the program key, which is down here, and you can see that program has come up on the display, and the, uh, the channel 1 is lit and the CH is blinking, indicating it's ready to uh, receive a frequency to be put in. So now I'm just going to key in the frequency that I want to put in here. So I'm going to put in 
uh, 147.300 and then hit enter. That frequency is programmed into channel 1. So now to advance to the programming the next channel I'm going to hit program and you can see that's advanced to channel 2 and now I'm ready to punch in another frequency. So now as you can see I've entered in that frequency. So I'll do one more just for the sake of demonstration. Again, program. And there I've written in the uh, 2 meter simplex calling frequency. Okay, so now just another note on programming. I'm going to go back into programming mode as if I were going to program uh, channel 4. And I'll put in a frequency. Um, but I'll make an intentional mistake there. If I realize that I've made a mistake while programming, I can hit the clear button to clear that out and re-enter the frequency. Whoops, I made another mistake, so I'll do it again. And uh, now that I've got it correct, I can hit enter and program that in. So that's, that's what the clear button does. This scanner also has a delay function where, uh, whereby it will um, pause on a particular frequency that it stopped on for a couple of seconds after any receive activity has stopped. So in other words, by default, with the delay turned off, if the radio were scanning and picked up activity on this frequency, as soon as that activity ceases, the scan will resume. Turning on delay, just by simply going to the memory channel in manual mode, and hitting delay, and you can see that delay is turned on over there. Um, the radio will then pause a couple of seconds before it resumes scanning. And uh, again, that's a matter of personal preference. I usually, personally, turn that on in most cases, but there are cases where you don't want it to uh, stay on a particular channel after it's received something. You want it to scan right away. So um, either way, you can turn it on, but you do have to enable it for each memory channel after it's been programmed. This particular scanner is configured with 200 memory channels grouped into 10 20 channel banks, so to speak. And all of the banks can be scanned at once, so all 200 channels can be scanned. Or you can scan, you know, just one bank at a time if you wish, or you can turn on and off certain banks. So when choosing which frequencies to program in, it's kind of important to uh, think about that and group the channels accordingly. Um, so for instance, um, you know, if you wanted a group of ham radio frequencies and a group of EMS frequencies, you may want to put you know, the ham radio frequencies in one bank and the EMS frequencies in another bank and you know, so on and so forth. So if you choose that you don't want to listen to the ham radio frequencies one day, you can uh, turn those off and, and or turn that bank off in your scan and uh, listen to just the, uh, the items that you want to listen to for that particular day. So having said that, I'll try and demonstrate that now. Um, even though I've only got three frequencies programmed in to the first three memory channels, um, I'll put this radio into scan mode and you can see by default it wants to scan all ten banks. And of course I have nothing programmed in any of the other channels, so that's going to take a while and it's going to be non-productive. So to turn off the unprogrammed banks, I just simply um, hit the number of the, the bank that I want to turn off. And you can see here uh, in the indicator that the banks are kind of grouped up here, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And the bar underneath the number indicates which bank the radio is presently scanning in. Another thing that's helpful is over here on the keypad, you can see that there are some little numbers um, in the silk screen above the actual buttons and that indicates which channels are grouped into which bank. So for instance bank 1 is consists of channels 1 through 20. Bank 2 consists of 21 through 40. So on and so forth. Now to simply turn them on or off it's just a matter of pushing the button while it's in scan mode. And you can see if I turn off all of these other banks and 0 being 10. Now the radio will just scan the first bank. And it won't 
continue on through the other banks. If I decide that I want to turn one of the other banks on, say I want to put on bank 5, I just push the button and then it'll scan banks 1 and 5 as indicated by the bar that's under the number. Um, so in other words, if there's no bar under the number, that bank is turned off in the scan. Okay. With all of the other banks turned off, I've, I'm just scanning bank 1, but again I've only got three uh, frequencies programmed into uh, memory right now, so the radio is scanning through a bunch of empty frequencies. So in order to skip those in the scan, I'm going to hit the manual button to get into manual mode, and then I'm going to push the button representing the channel that I want to go into. So if I want to go into channel 1, I'll push 1 and then hit manual again, and that brings me to channel, uh, channel 1. Now I can increment through the channels by pushing the manual button again. Now when I get to the first empty channel, or any channel for that matter that you want to skip in a scan for any reason, um, you can push the lockout button. And once you push that lockout button, that frequency or that channel will not be scanned, regardless of you know which bank you have turned on or anything like that. So I'm going to go through and lock out all of the rest of the channels in this first bank because I don't have anything programmed in them. Now when I push manual again, it's going to increment to channel 21 and you can see that the indicator has also moved over to bank 2 indicating that I'm in bank 2. But for right now I'm not going to worry about locking out any of the channels in there. Um, when I'm in scan mode I just won't scan bank 2 and that'll take care of that. So now if I go back and hit scan, you can see now it just scans the three frequencies that I've programmed in. Now in scan mode, the scanner has two speeds, fast and slow. By default, it's on fast, and uh, if you want to slow it down, you can. Um, I find that it works fairly well in fast mode, and I really usually find no need to uh, you know, make it go slower. Another function that this radio has is a priority channel um, that you can set. So if I push that, uh, every so often you can see there that it will automatically check channel 1, which in this case is the default priority channel um, for activity. Um, regardless of whether you're in manual mode, listening to one frequency, or whether you're in scan mode, um, it's going to periodically check uh, memory channel 1 for activity and lock on there. That's useful if you were, um, you know, if you've got something that's really important that you want to listen to, it'll, you know, make sure that you don't miss it. But one thing that I don't like about it is if you are listening to something, uh, whether in scan mode or, you know, you're in manual mode and you're just listen to, listening to a particular frequency, um, say like a ham radio conversation, every time it switches over to uh, check memory channel 1, it's going to interrupt the audio a little bit. Um, you know, for me, I never use the priority function, um, but some people like it. Um, I just don't like that interruption in the audio. If you decided that um, you didn't want channel 1 as the priority channel, you can program um, another channel as the priority channel. In order to program the priority channel, um, you push the program button and then you push the channel that you want to make the priority channel so I'll just pick channel 3 and then hit priority and now channel 3 should be the priority channel so if I uh, go to channel 1 turn on priority we should see it check channel 3 periodically now this particular scanner can also scan a range of frequencies um, for activity. So you may not have a particular memory channel program and you, you may not know what frequencies are active or you may just simply want to scan a portion of the band to listen to. Um, and you can accomplish that by first programming in some limits and then scanning between those limits. So I'll try to demonstrate here. So in order to set the limits to scan within, I can hit program and then limit and then you can see over here, um, because I don't have anything programmed in at the moment, this is all zeros, but you can see there's three dashed lines over here. 
near the bottom of the display. And that indicates that we're currently programming in the lower limit of frequencies. So I'm going to program in, um, just for the sake of argument, um, 146.500. Now I'll hit enter and then limit again and you can see that the, the three dashed lines have moved up to the top of the display indicating that we're now going to program in the upper limit of the scan. So I'll punch in 147.500 for sake of argument. Hit enter and now that the two limits are programmed in, I can keep pushing limit to change the upper and lower limit. Once I have whatever limits I want to program in established, I can go back into manual mode and then pushing this uh, button with the, the up arrow and the down arrow uh, surrounding it will cause it to start scanning uh, through the frequencies. And as you can see here, it's scanning up and of course it's locked on to just some noise there, so I should be able to just push that again to get it going again. Um, but you can see here it'll scan up through um, these frequencies, and if it hears activity it'll stop on that particular frequency and let you listen to it. Now once it reaches the upper limit of the, uh, the scan that I programmed in, it'll cycle back and uh, scan um, you know, from the lower to the upper. While, while scanning in limit mode, um, if you want to change the direction of the scan, if I can get it to stop you know, locking on to stuff it shouldn't, um, you can simply push the other arrow. So right now you can see that the thing is scanning up through the frequencies. If I push this key, it'll start to scan down through the frequencies, so you can change the direction. In conjunction with the limit scan mode, the scanner also offers 10 scratch pad memory channels, so to speak, that it calls uh, monitor memory channels. So while in uh, limit scan, if it locks onto a frequency that you want to save, um, like in this case, uh, this thing is just locked on to some noise, but I'll, you know, I'll use this as an example. Um, if I want to save this frequency into one of those scratch pad memories, I simply push monitor so now that has stored this frequency into what it calls monitor channel 1. So in normal scan mode these numbers represent the scan banks and the underlying line uh, indicates which bank is active. But if when in monitor mode you can see monitor is on the display there this indicates the 10 monitor channels and the underline indicates which channel that you're on. So I've written this frequency into memory channel or monitor channel 1. So now I should be able to just resume scanning and if I can get this thing to lock on to another noise frequency, so that one for example, if I push monitor again on this one, it'll now write that frequency into monitor channel 2. So now if I want to go back and review the different monitor channels uh, while, while I'm not in limit scan. I can go to manual mode and I can push the monitor button and pushing the monitor button will just cycle through the stored monitor frequencies or monitor channels. And you can see um, there's the first one and then there's the second one that I found. Once I've saved some monitor channels, if I decide that I want to move one of the monitor channels to a permanent memory channel and have it scanned as part of the normal scan, um, I simply go to the frequency or the channel that I want to put the frequency into. So in this case I'll put it in channel 5 and then I'll hit program to go into program mode, press the monitor button to go in back into monitor mode. I'll pick the monitor channel that I want to program just by simply hitting the number of the channel. I'll go back to number one. Once I've got the uh, the channel picked that I want to write into memory, I then hit enter and now that writes that to channel five. Well that'll just about wrap up the overview and programming of this Realistic Pro 2021 uh, programmable scanner. 
Um, if you found this video helpful or useful, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you have a comment or want to subscribe, feel free to do so. Thanks for watching.